Hello everyone. Welcome to Winyard Golf Club. This is John from John Hutton Golf Channel and here's another one of my videos that I've done here uh, that will hopefully help. It's um, the top 10 things amateur golfers do when they're out on the course. And even some of these mistakes <laughs> I do myself. So what are the top 10 mistakes amateurs do? Let's start the video and let's find out. And sorry, just before we do start the video, um, this is what I've seen myself on the golf course. This is what I've done myself on the golf course too. I will tell you the mistakes and I will tell you how to fix them. So here we go. Oh, Jesus, God, I'm late. Oh, hello, Joe. You all right? Yes, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I had a, had a delay. I had a delay. Yeah. Well, there was traffic on the A19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what time were we meant to be teed off? 2.30, but what, what time is it now? T Jesus, 2.32, bloody hell. Um, where's my glove, where's my glove? Where's my tees? Um, right, 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 right. No, 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 it doesn't matter about a pattern swing, we haven't got time for that. I'm just gonna put down the tee and hit the ball off. What's that? No, 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 it doesn't matter about a pattern swing, Joe, it doesn't matter about it. I've played golf all my life, I know how to hit a golf ball, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Whew. Bloody hell, I've got to hurry up here, I better get out quick minutes. Right. Oh. oh, I don't believe it. I don't, oh. I've completely duffed it. Never mind, come on, we've got to get a move on. We've got to get a move on quick because the group behind us will, will, will you know, they'll be teeing off in the first in about five minutes. Hurry, let's move on. Right, golf friends. This is the first mistake from the very, very start of the round that I see with amateur golfers. What they do, some of them, they obviously turn up from work at five o'clock in the afternoon or six o'clock in the afternoon, or they get stuck in traffic or something happens, they forget the, the wallet or they forget the phone, they drive back, they get to the golf club, they look at um, the watch and they go, Jesus, I'm two minutes past my tea time, I'm five minutes past my tea time, they rush like hell, they get to the tea box, they quickly say hello to everyone, and they don't know what the hell to do. Their mind's racing, they're in a panic, they're in a paddy, they don't know what the hell is going on, and basically, they get the glove, they put it on as quick as they can, and they just take the swipe, no practice swing, no range balls, no practice the putty, no practice swings. That's the result of it. Please, 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 whatever you do, the remedy to this is, make sure that if someone says to you, we're teeing off at five o'clock and you can't make it for five o'clock, you say to them, for God's sake, please make it 20 past five or half five. Please, please make sure you've got time. Make sure you've got time to warm up, to stretch, um, hit the range balls, hit the buckets. A couple of just, to, I'm, I'm not talking about doing what the pros do. I'm talking about just hit, just 10 pra pra practice balls or just a few putting strokes just to get the feel of it or even just stretching and just doing a few practice swings like that in the car park. Trust me, trust me, there is nothing worse than getting to the first tee, rushing like mad, putting the ball down and then just rushing the shot and totally duff it. It's a horrible start to the round, nobody wants to see it and especially not yourself. It just puts you in the bad mood, it puts you in the wrong mindset and, and trust me on this, it's not just one shot or two shots. That sort of mentality can continue for four, five, six holes until you start getting into the rhythm. So please, 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 whatever you do, do not rush onto the first tee, knowing fine well you haven't warmed up, you haven't had any practice strokes, and your mindset is totally wrong. That's number one. Right, I know this is a very tricky shot. I know that the trees are in the way. I know that I'm blocked and everything like that but I don't care I really don't care I'm just after that bad start I'm just gonna absolutely hit it as far as I can down there I'm gonna absolutely blitz it down there then try and get as close as I can to that green because I've duffed me first one I'm like a right idiot right here we go I'm just gonna absolutely knock the nails off this right down there right come on Oh, how's that happen? Joe, I don't normally hit the hybrid like that. 
What's going on there? I've popped a chunk of yogs. Oh, what a bloody... Oh, for heaven's sake, man. Why didn't I just take me medicine and just get it back onto the fairway? Right, golf friends, this is what I see so many golfers do. They don't take the medicine. They hit the first shot wayward, they get into trouble like this, and basically they just they try and say to themselves, right, I'm going to absolutely rip this as far down as I can to make up for my first shot. And honestly, please, it, it does not work. It does, I've seen it so many times with amateurs trying to make up for a bad first shot and try and get as far down as they can. Just except with this hole now, you're going to have to get on the green in three. And just all you've got to do is hit a little bump and run. In fact, I'll try and do it myself here. Just a little bump and run. And just try and hit yourself back onto the fairway. It's not perfect, I put it a little bit lower than I would have liked. But you can see where the first ball is there where I've absolutely hammered it. That one's got a little bit further up now, I've got about 160, 170 yards to the green for my third shot. That is far better than topping the ball 30 yards and leaving yourself just, in fact, from that position down there, I don't think even I could get in the green in three. That's about 250 yards, at least I've got a chance with that one now of getting the green in three. And at least I've got a chance to recover on this hole. Whereas with that hybrid there where I've completely duffed it, not a chance. So that's how you fix that mistake. That's number two. Let's get the range finder out. And let's see the yardage. It's 145.2 yards. Okay, John. Uh, uh, oh, right. Looking at my yardages, my pitching wedge goes 140, my 99 goes 152. Right. Well, what do I do here then? Do I do a pitching wedge or a nine? A nine's going to be too much. Nine's going to be far too much. I'll go over the pitching wedge. I'll just take the coating off it with the pitching wedge. That's what I'll do. That's the best option for this. I'm just going to absolutely. Take the coat off it and get it on the green. Here we go. I can hit this, I can hit this 145, not a problem. I've got the strength to do this. Oh, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? In that bunker on the right. How's that on the bunker on the right? I thought I could carry that 145. Hey, I should have gone for the 99. Don't be so silly. I shouldn't have gone for the 99. Yeah, what? Overhitting is better than underhitting. Don't talk so stupid. Well, maybe, maybe I'll be at the back of the green. Then maybe I'll have, worst ways I'll be at the back of the green and have a pitch rather than be in that bunker. Hey, Joe, maybe you're right about that. I don't know how I've done that. That's number three, golf friends. A lot of amateurs think they can hit the ball a lot harder than they can. Trust me on this. If you go down to the range on a track man or something like that, and it tells you you're hitting it on average 136, 138, that's what you're hitting it. You are not hitting this 145 yards or whatever the yardage says. It's better to over club it than it is to under club it. That's one thing you never see pros do is over hit it. If you over hit it, especially on a hole like this, worst way is you've got to chip back rather than having a difficult shot out the bunker or short the bunker, the 25 yard pitch, which I'm saying to you all the time are the hardest shots in golf, don't leave yourself them. For goodness sake, the remedy for that is go for the higher club. If you're in between clubs, always go for the higher club. At least then you're on the green or the back of the green. What, this is a difficult par four? What do you mean? It's tight. Yeah, I can see it's tight, Joe. I'm not daft. What? 
Maybe I should think about playing it safe. Why no? I'm not going to play it safe. I'm going to take the driver and get as far as down as I can, man. What? I just want to pitch on the green. Eh? What do you mean there's bunkers? I know there's bunkers, but I'm not going to end up in them. I know am I driving. I could hit it way down there. Eh? There's rough and all. Well, it, it doesn't matter. I know I can drive it this far. I know I, 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 I'm going to clear them all. Just You just watch. Watch me clear these bunkers. I'm an 11 handicapper, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me what I'm what I'm doing wrong. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'll bang this all the way down there, just watch. Hey? Right. Okay. The bunker on the right. What the hell have I done that? Hey, maybe I should have played it safe. No, oh, maybe I should have, but I think about it, maybe I should have played it safe. That goal, friends, is mistake number four. Ego. Ego off the tee. Thinking that you can carry bongers, thinking you're better than you are. An example of this is it's a 366 yard hole. There's bunkers tight everywhere, on the right, on the on the left, you're out of bounds. There's a bunker there, if you hit it too far down on the left, that'll catch a ball, which with my drive you can. What you do in this situation, it's very simple. All you've got to do is play it safe down there, and take all those hazards, all those bunkers out of bounds, out of consideration, and try and get it so you get the ball 10 yards short of that bunker on the right. So in this situation, I just take a hybrid and I just say and just accept it. I'm going to take a nice easy shot, ease myself about 150, 160 yards into the green, and just accept that I'm not going to leave myself like what Google wants me to all ever do and get get the green to one. I'm not going to do that. So the driver, forget about it, learn from it, and just say to yourself, I'm just going to hit this straight down the middle, which I'm going to try and do here with my hybrid. It's got a little bit left. It's where those left bunkers are down there, slightly to the left. But I'm in play. I've got a second shot onto the green. It's going to be on grass and it's not going to be in a bunker where I'm probably right up on the lip or I could end up in thick rough and duffy drive. I know where it's gone. I know it's safe. I know I'm in play. And I know fine well now I've got a second shot onto the green. That's how you do it. That's how you uh, learn and that's how you fix that problem. Hey, what an awful round this has been. What a bloody awful round this has been. I've been shocking. I've hit the ball all over the place. I've been monkey. I've been useless. I've just bloody out. I've messed this up. Oh, I'm a bloody idiot. It's no good. It's useless. I'm fed up. Should have get in the clubhouse. Just bloody get a bloody pint and go home. I don't know. God's sake. Couldn't have played any worse today, could I? Bloody terrible, absolutely awful. This one's probably going to end up being crap and all. Yes, I know, crap and brilliant. Oh, yeah, brilliant. In the bunker, brilliant. That's brilliant, John. That's it. Keep playing crap, keep playing useless. That's it. Very, very well done. That's mistake number five, goal friends, that I say. Uh, four or five, I'm not sure, <laughs> I've lost count, but that is mistake number five. The amateur golfer, if he's having a bad round, can beat himself up so bad, he actually makes himself play bad. I mean, 
right there, I was calling myself, I was cursing myself, I was saying how crap I am, how useless I am. And the mindset is there is negative, negative, negative. The remedy for this is to think positive, to think, you know, I am a good golfer, I am capable of playing good shots, I can get pars, I can get this on the green, you know, it's just a blip, it's just a blip, I'll come good, I know I'm good enough, it'll come good, don't worry about it, just focus on the next shot, which is what I want to try and do here. Okay, John, I know I'm playing bad, but it's just a little blip, it's fine, everything's going to change on this hole, you know, you're a good golfer, I mean, you know, you're not an 11th handicapper for no reason, you know, you can play good golf. You know, just think about the basics, think about the basics, keep your head down, swing through the ball, nice easy swing, easy grip, just think happy thoughts, everything's okay, look at that green, look at that green, that's all you've got to think about, you can do this John, you can do this, not a problem, you're going to touch the round round here, and you're going to end up finishing on a decent score, that's what's going to happen. to the left, it's on the bank there, we've chipped in, but it's far better than being in the bunker, we're going to easily pitch out of there, we can get a par, and um, we can start the round from there, that's how you fix a golf fence, thinking positive, having a positive mentality, and um, yeah, that's basically it, always think positive and always back yourself, now just as an example, here's the two balls, and this is actually number five. This is the fault with number five. I'll play the ball um, out the bunker, what a lot of amateur golfers do. So here we go. This is what a lot of amateur golfers do. Oh, Christ, get in the bloody bunker. Marvellous, absolutely marvellous, isn't it, man? Well, isn't this great? Isn't this marvellous? I'm in the bunker. Well, this sums my round up, doesn't it? This sums it up, doesn't it? Bloody useless. Yeah. Oh. What's happened there? I can't believe I've done that. A golfer like me doing that. How did that happen? How the hell have I ended up chopping on that? What have I done wrong? I just don't get his what were you? That's unexplainable. I'm an 11 handicapper. What am I doing wrong? That's number five, golf friends. You can get so wound up, so angry. You can forget the basic techniques that you've learned. You can forget the basic how to hit the ball clean. How to, like, like remembering the tips I told you, open the stance, open the grip, nice easy swing, follow through with the ball. And you end up completely chopping at it. I've seen so many amateurs do this. They get so annoyed or they're so tense over the shot. Instead of just doing that nice easy swing, they actually go, and they scoop the ball up honestly it doesn't work trying your own technique or getting wound up it doesn't work stay nice and calm remember the techniques that that we went through open the stance open the grip nice easy swing it doesn't matter if you're in a bunker it doesn't matter if you're in a position like this just remember the basic techniques and stay calm and keep thinking positive thinking i can pull this shot off I always say to myself, I'm capable. That's what I did wrong with Crook. I started to not believe in myself. I started to say, my show came, I, I, it's getting me out of the muck too many times here. I know eventually it's going to let me down. And what happened? It let me down. So this is something I even do myself. Uh, beating myself up, I do this myself as well. So I've got to take my own medicine here too. So here we go. It's okay, John. Nice and easy. You're capable of doing these shots. You know you're capable of doing these shots. Nice and easy. Get it over. It'll be on the green. There you go. You didn't hit it perfect, John. By no means did you hit it perfect. But you're up on the green. You're putting for par. 
it's far better than chopping at it john and it's far better than being in that bunker so there we go um we've got a par chance now we can get our round back everything's good right i'm on the green here we go there we settle up all i've got to do is just put it in the hole and that's it What the hell has happened there? What the hell has happened there? I've under hit it, I've under read it. It's gone way off to the left. Whoa. What the hell did I do wrong there? This again, golf friends, number six. The amateur golfer does a lot. I see this a lot of people when they're in a four ball, especially. Um, and they feel like they're holding their other player partners up if they play it bad. They don't read the greens properly. They do not read the greens properly. They rush to the ball, these little 10 footers or whatever, 10 to 12 footers, and they totally misread the green. I'm guilty sometimes of this myself because I have people behind us and I feel pressurized. They totally misread the green, they totally misread the speed, and they absolutely cock it up. Now, the remedy for this is take your time with your putts. Don't feel rushed. First of all, this is, I've deliberately put it at this angle for you. Deliberately put it at this angle for you. This is the angle you should always line up your putts to start off with the side view. I've seen too many amateur golfers, including myself, I do this. This is a remedy for me as well, where we don't look at the side view. Now, straight away, I've under hit that. In my mind, I've just rushed there and I've just thought it's an ordinary putt, it's just straight, it's going nowhere and it's just level. Straight away, you can see it's uphill. So straight away, in my mind, I know I've got to hit this harder. I know, looking at the contours from the side here, it's got to go slightly right to left. I've hit that left to start off with and it went veering off to the left. So now I know the line, I know roughly the line and I know roughly that it's slightly uphill and I've got to hit it harder. So we know that straight away and sometimes from the from the back view or the front view where the ball is you can't see that honestly sometimes it's so subtle you can't pick it up so here we go let's see it now that i know from the side looking at the side i'm going to line it up properly from where the ball is let's see what happens now Not quite enough, not quite enough, but it was dead in line with the hole. If I hit that an extra six inches, that would have been in. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Always read your putts properly. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel like you've just got to get there and put the ball. Always take your time with your putts. My goodness, this is a tricky putt. This little uh, four foot of squeeze, the first five foot of the tricky one next. Yeah, I can see the break, I can see the left to right break. Uh, yeah, I'll hit it to the left, I'll, I'll, hit, I'll hit it a little bit further to the left than I normally do. So it doesn't go left. What did you do? You said you put it straight and hope it goes in. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, right, okay. Okay, 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 okay. It's alright, it's okay. Just a bit left, just a bit left, let's see what happens. Um, well, should I? I should have just put it straight, but I don't know, I don't know, just. Oh, I, I, I better put it because I don't want to keep looking here. Oh, for God's sake. I don't believe it, I've missed a simple putt like that, a little five footer. That is unbelievable. How the hell have I missed a putt like that? That, I think, is either is it number six or number seven. The amateur golfer can sometimes overthink these little four or five footers, especially little four footer like that. You can overthink them. If you look 
if the greens and you think about it for too long now you don't carry on like that on the course there you don't carry on like oh yeah like that actually speaking through it when everybody's watching you but i try to do it so in your mind that's how your mind's racing it's racing like that it's saying hold on a minute is this going to go left to right is it just a straight put is it this is it that have i read it right these are tricky ones i hate these four to five footers uh and then you tense up you get tense your hands get tight on the club and you, you, you over hit it with the putter and then you start cocking your wrists and, and everything goes to pot with your putting stroke just when you get to these little five footers and everything have a look at it just have a look at it then what i do is just either one practice stroke or one two and then straight away i line it up i get to the ball and just put it i try and make it as simple as i possibly can if there's a little break on it make sure that when you say oh i think there's a break go with your good feel but stick with it stick with your good feel back yourself commit to it sometimes you'll see on my videos i'll say to myself especially with my irons is this a six iron yeah it's a six iron i'm committed that's it my if my good feel says it's a six iron i go with a six iron if it says it's an eight iron i go with an eight iron i commit to the shot You've got to commit you've got to commit if you don't commit to these little putts and you don't know what you're doing chances are you're going to miss them so straight away i'm going to do this putt and i'm going to commit to it and i'm going to say right it's just dead straight i'm just going to put it in and see what happens I actually hit the lip and it went round and went in. I hit a little bit too hard. But it's in the hole. I've committed two practice strokes. Um, and then I line it up and I say to myself, yep, dead straight. Boof, in the hole. And then I move on. And I don't think about it after that. I think about what I'm doing the next hole. I don't think about what I did in the previous hole. I move on. And that's how to fix that fault. Jesus, I better hurry up. There's people behind me. They'll be thinking, what the hell is, what the hell is he doing? He's taking too long. I better hurry up, I better just get the glove on, tee the ball and just whack it and try and get some space between us. Uh, Jesus. Come on, John, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There's people behind, you're holding them up, come on. Oh, oh man. Okay, come on, come on, we've got to get on with my next shot. I've got to get on with my next shot. We've got to get some space here. We've got to get some space between these people. I don't know where we're at with these numbers. I'm totally bamboozled. I think it's number nine. That's the ninth one. People up behind your back. Do not ever feel pressured. If 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 there's a if you're on your, in, in a four ball or a three ball or two balls behind you and you ever feel a little bit of pressure, don't try and hurry your game up. Just finish the hole off, take your time, no rush. Just finish the hole off and just let them play through. Just say, okay lads, they're obviously keeping pace with us here and everything. You can play through. That's all you do. That's how you fix that. Dead simple. Just let them play through. Don't feel that you've got to keep up with pace with them. Just let them play through and keep going at your own speed. All right, there's my ball there. Uh, let's have a look. What? I'll just have a guess. I'll just have a guess. I uh, haven't. Uh, I, I can't bother getting the range finder out. This is one fifty stick there. Say about one forty five. We'll say about one forty five. Let's see if I can get it there. Yeah, yeah, one forty five. One forty five. Right. Here we go. Yeah. It's short. How oh, is it short? I'm sure that was about 145. I'm sure that was about 145. Hold on, I'll check with the rangefinder. Here's the rangefinder from there. Where, 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 what? How far was that? Oh, that was about 156.7. No. Can it be? Can it be? 
Oh well, never mind. That I think, old friends, is number nine. Number nine is the guess the yardages. They can't be bothered getting the range finder out, or they can't be bothered looking at the GPS watches. They guess the yardages. That's the result. That's the result. They look at the stakes there and they think 150. Oh, that's great. That golf fence is 150 to the centre. If it's at the back or at the front, you're going to overhit your shot. So for goodness sake, please use your GPSs, please use your range finders. Know your exact yardages so you don't under hit the club like I have there or over hit it. Now I'm going to take a 9-iron and let's see if I get it up there this time. Because I know 156, I can carry it with a 9-iron if I hit it well. And let's just see what happens with the 9 iron. Yeah, I saw it bounce up, it's on the green. There we go. That is why you use your range finder. That's why you use your GPS. Never, ever, ever, ever guess what yardage you've got left to the green. Always use your devices, your GPSs or your range finders so you know exactly how hard you need to hit it and you know how far each club carries that distance. Right. There's my ball there. Right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one of those fancy Phil Mickelson flip flop shots. And listen, Phil can do them. They can't be that hard. I'll do them as well. Here we go. Let's see what happens here then. Oh, right. Uh oh. Never. I don't understand that. Phil seems to do them all right. Why can't I do them all right? That golf friends is another big fault I see. They try and do the fancy shots when there's absolutely no need to do it. I mean, I used to do this myself, but I've learnt now. In this situation here, you don't need a fancy flip-flop shot. All you need is go for the basic chip and run. All you need is a basic chip and run. Nothing else is required. Don't try and do the fancy shots, just try and pitch it on and get as near to the hole as you possibly can. There's no need for fancy shots here. Now I've hit that a little bit too hard and it's hit the back of the green. But Sorry, there's a person behind me back now, so I'm taking the old medicine and just moving on. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, do not go for the fancy flop shot or any other fancy shot you can think of when the simple bump and run or the simple chip or the simple iron shot or whatever it is will suffice. Go for the simplest shot you can think of. Now, you've seen me do the flop shots. Um, stingers and all that kind of sh stuff that's great, that's great but they're only needed for certain situations where you're in a desperate situation or you're in a really tight tight line like I've been in before um, some shots up where there's been trees where there's been uh, ghosts lying in the fairways all this kind of stuff so please, 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 if you can do the simple shot, do the simple shot. I think I've just about covered them except one, 
uh, number 10, which I'm going to do in just a minute for you. Oh yes, I've hit an absolute spanker. How far are we from here to the green? Let's have a look. Two hundred and sixty one yards when my hybrid already goes two hundred and thirty five. No, nope, doesn't matter. I'm just going to rip the core off it on this part five. I'm going to try and reach it in two, and I'm going to prove something to all these three people watching us those people over there in that hole, everybody on this over there on that tee box. I'm going to prove I can hit this ball. I'm going to get it right down there, and I'm going to get it on the green in two. Watch this. Just gonna absolutely smash it down there, and I've gotta just eagle this hole. Watch this. Oh, oh! Oh, it's been a long hundred yards in that bunker. What's happened there? I don't understand that. Why? Why has it got a long hundred yards? Why have I topped it for? Maybe because I tried to hit it too hard, I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, maybe I just tried to hit it too hard. Yeah, this is the last one, golf friends. This is the last one before we're done with this video. Um, par fives. Do not fall for that trap. Don't fall for the trap that you think it's 30, 40 yards outside my range of getting it in two. But I'm going to absolutely rip the core off it and I'm going to try and get there and I'm going to prove to people that I can, I am a big hitter. Please, please, please don't do that. I've said before in the video, if your yardage, say for example my 5 hybrid there, or my 4 hybrid I could have gone for. My 4 hybrid, the furthest I can hit it with that off, off a normal deck is 220 yards. So I'm going to say it to myself now, and if I'm in this position here, I'm going to have to say it to myself. Listen John, you're going to have to accept you are not going to reach that green in two. There's not a cat in hell's chance you're going to reach that green in two. You just got to have to say it to yourself, this is a three shot par five. I'll get it down there, I'll get myself within a hundred yards hopefully. Leave yourself a little pitch shot and just have two putts for par or have a putt for birdie. That I've done on occasions. I, sometimes I've got to accept when I know my limitations, I know my limitations, so for example if I get a par 5 and it says on the scorecard 490 yards, 500 yards, straight away in my mind I'm thinking I can reach this in 2, but I've got to hit a spanker of a drive, I've got to hit a 270 yards, 280 yards and I've got to hit it straight down the fairway, I can't have any obstacles in my way, I can't be near a bunker or anything like that i've got to have a clear view and i've got to have a clear shot then then i might consider going for the green and two but even then i'm like that even then i'm a bit shaken i say to myself well maybe i'm best up laying up here but the hero was phil mickelson and i can't help but go for it like phil would do but basically you have to accept at some point i ain't gonna reach this green in two i'm gonna have to just lay it up this is what I'm going to try and do here. I'm just going to try and take probably seven iron. There's my seven. There it is. I can hit that a good 165-ish. Get it down there. Leave myself 100 yards. A little pitch onto the green. Perfect. Just gonna roll up there nicely. Probably leave us 110, 100 yards, pitch onto the green. So I've accepted this is a par five, it's, this is a proper par five. I've accepted it now in my mind. 265 yards away. I can't go for the green because my hybrid off the deck, even at my highest hybrid, that only goes 220. I've accepted it and I've moved on and I've said, right, I've committed to a seven. I can hit that 160. I'll leave myself 100 yards. Nice little pitch onto the green. I'll have a two put for par. That's how you've got to think, golf friends. Do not think to yourself 
at any stage I have got to hit this on the green on a par 5. It doesn't matter if it's a 460 yard par 5. It doesn't matter if it's 450 yards. If you don't feel that you can't get in that green or two without absolutely smashing the core off the ball and going outside your comfort zone, do not do it. Just go for the safe option, just lay up, give yourself a nice little pitch onto the green. Trust me, it works. The other side, you're just asking for bother. Okay? So that's all 10 done. And just to prove your point, golf friends, I'm going to play the shot from where it's ended up. So that's 87.5 yards left. If I went to play that ball there, luckily he kicked out the bunker, but we're talking 170 yards. From here, I've got 87.5 yards. I'm just going to pull a 56 and just pop it on the green. Hopefully. Completely messed it up. <laughs> completely, no, I'll play that again. I'll play that again. I completely messed that one up. I'll rush through again. Nicely. So it went right but came out and on the green. Left yourself probably a 15 footer. So that's how to do it, girlfriends. That's how to do it. Sorry about the first one, that one was horrible. But the second one was more like me for the video. So yeah, that's how to do it. That's how to play a par five. If you don't feel like you can play a comfortable shot in two, just set yourself or put yourself on and have a two put for par. Okay, girlfriends, that's the video done then. So just a summary then, that video, it's not about technique, it's not about uh, how good to strike the ball, how to do the perfect swing and everything, it's got nothing to do with technique, it's got nothing to do with power or, or finesse or anything like that. Basically, all of that, well, if I could sum it up as a whole, is course management. Uh, course management, yeah. Basically, all of that is just common sense and, and course management. Um, the other one I forgot to add is make sure you use your local knowledge as well on the course. If you're on the course, um, make sure you use your local knowledge. There's so much to be said about being a member of a golf club that you know where all the hazards are. You know every, you know everything about the course. Make sure you use your course knowledge as well. Don't ignore that. Um, so yeah, basically I'll just recap it through. I've got my little notes here actually, because I, I wrote them down as they came into the mind how I've seen them in the golf course. Um, tell me if I haven't covered any on the comments below. Um, no warm-ups, that's one big, remember this, this is just a summary. No warm-ups, I'll just go through it with you again how to fix it. No warm-ups, make sure you get on the tee plenty of time. Give yourself 20 minutes in the car park, even if it's just a few practice swings. Get yourself on the putt and green, get yourself mentally right for it. Um, ego, pulling out the driver on holes that you don't need to, on holes where it's a tight fairway, or holes where your friends are egging you on to say, right, try and get this in two, or whatever it is. Don't fall for the trap if you feel there's a tight fairway or something like that. Don't be frightened to pull your hybrid or your three wood or whatever it is, or an iron. Play it safe. Don't feel pressurised. Um, make sure you read the greens properly make sure you look from the side view as well as the front view because there are subtle differences you can't see the brakes sometimes from the front view or you can't see if it's going uphill or downhill you can on the side view um, never ever 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 if you're in between yardages do not you, you saw what I did with the pitching wedge of the 9 it was right in between the pitching wedge goes 138 my nine goes 152, was it? 152? Something like that, anyway. 152, always go for the higher club. If you feel that you can't hit it with your normal swing, do not try and do a nuclear pitching wedge or nuclear nine, if it's your nine or your eight. Always go for the higher club. Um, 
yeah do not be tense on your chip shots uh, do not be tense on bunker shots do not feel tense and everything relax uh, remember the techniques easy grip open stance open the grip and just hit follow through with the ball make sure you hit the sand before the ball basic techniques do not get yourself wound up um, don't try and feel you've got to go for par fives and two if you are outside the range like ah, I was there 260 yards don't feel as if you've got to try and blitz it just set yourself up with like I did like a little seven iron leave yourself a 90 yard pitch or a hundred yard pitch and then to put it for, for par nothing wrong with that nothing wrong at all, with that at all in the old days that's how it was designed it was designed to be like that you were designed to have three shots on the green you were never ever ever meant to hit um a golf ball onto that green in 500 yards of the old days in three so just accept it just accept it and move on um don't overthink the 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 the, the little five footers don't think is it you know don't go over the ball and then go against your gut feel if your gut feel says there's a little bit of left to right or right to left you do that you aim for the right edge or the left edge don't go against your gut don't all of a sudden pull back and start worrying and thinking hold on is it actually straight is it this is that just commit to it like i did two little practice strokes then over the ball commit to it and put and if you miss it big deal it's a miss put it's a game of golf that's it um don't beat yourself up remember I, I did that at crook when i was knackered and tired i really beat myself up and said i was pathetic i was useless don't do that because that mentality can it, it can ruin you throughout the entire round keep positive keep thinking realistically thinking at some point my game's going to turn around i could do this i'm not an 11 handicapper or if you're a 20 handicapper, just keep telling yourself i'm not an idiot i know what i'm doing i'm not that handicapped for no reason just keep thinking positive and always don't look i didn't think i mentioned this on the video but a lot of amateur golfers when they tee it up on the tee box or on a little par three they look at the hazards they focus on the hazards and i sometimes do this myself i sometimes focus on the hazards instead of saying let's just focus on the green look at the green look where i want to put it on the green and if you get it on the green be happy because you'll be two putting for par um and it's the same with your iron shots on par fours and stuff by the way just focus on the green don't think about the hazards note that they're there i'm not saying just totally ignore them note that they're there so you know where to put the ball but don't overthink the hazards always look at the green focus on the green that's your main target not the hazards you're not looking to hit the ball in the hazards if i and that shot there that pitch shot there i was just focusing on the green i wasn't focusing on the bunker on the right i wasn't focusing on the bunker on the left I was just focusing on getting the ball on the green that's how you do it um and i think i've just about covered it apart from never ever feel pressured on the tee box if you've got see if you're a two ball see if you're a four ball and a two balls behind you pushing you and pushing you and pushing you don't feel you've got to keep up a pace with them don't feel pressured because that's how i do it myself i feel pressured sometimes when someone's up my back and at the finish it's not worth it it's not worth the hassle just tell them to play through that's all you've got to do so that's it that's it that's all the mistakes i see amateurs do on the course that's the top 10 mistakes i see if i've missed any big ones out obviously guessing the yardage as well i missed that out do not guess yardages don't guess yardages use your range finds use your gps's use your local knowledge use everything at your disposal so you know exactly what you're doing but if i've missed any other ones out please comment below please tell me um anything i've missed out that you can think of because obviously i'm just having to myself and i don't pick up on everything there might be something you've picked up that i do with my game that uh, i know fine well i beat myself up i know fine well i've got faults with my swing i know fine well um sometimes i can overthink puts i'm exactly the same i'm no different i need to learn some of these things um yeah and that's it that's me that's john from john hutton golf channel um hopefully you've enjoyed the video keep subscribing and liking and hopefully hopefully i'll see you um in another video soon thanks for now see you later bye for now